Hey, good morning, guys. Once again, uh, welcome back um, to today's lecture of uh, worship ministry. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, thanks for connecting. It's good to see you all once again. Um, can I request, hey, hey, uh, Kanan, uh, do you mind starting us off with a word of prayer, please? Yeah, sure. You can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Our dear Heavenly Father, I praise you in this morning, Lord. Lord, um, I pray for uh, each and every one of us in this class, Lord. Lord, I pray for uh, uh, Pastor Roshan. Uh, Lord, give us a good understanding and knowledge to uh, receive something new in this class, Lord. Lord, from uh, starting and the, until the end, we we should not have any connection issues and, and all, Lord. Lord, um, give us a good understanding and help us to learn more from your word, Lord. Lord, strengthen him to teach us nicely. Lord, uh, help others also to join very quickly, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Kanan. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Uh, so let's do a quick recap of what we uh, covered in the last class. Okay. Can um, can all of you all just share what we you know what we covered um, in the last class? Okay, starting is the problem. We we spoke on the the four altars of Abraham, right? We uh, yeah, we did a, a few uh, just a uh, we didn't go too deep uh, in it, but uh, just the basics of basic understanding of uh, what altars actually meant uh, in the, to the people of those days, and then uh, we saw Abraham building four altars and how he goes on this uh, journey of faith, right? Um, what else can you recall from our last lecture? Feel free to unmute and just share very quickly, right? It's just points. Yes, sir. You know, we see, we altars. saw altar is a... Yeah, go ahead, Prince. So, uh, we uh, say poor altars uh, of Abraham. The yeah. first altar is uh, obedience, altar of obedience. Second is altar of intimacy. Third is altar, uh, altar of commitment and separation, uh, separation. And fourth is uh, altar of sacrifice. Thank you, Prince. So you have the altar of obedience, altar of intimacy, altar of commitment and separation, and then altar of sacrifice, right? And each of them resembles and symbolizes uh, Abraham's journey, uh, spiritual journey, right, and uh, and and we kind of concluded with with what God expects of us. Uh, so, like in the Old Testament, altars represented a place of worship, a place of death where blood would flow. It was a place of surrender. Um, it was a place of sacrifice. I'd, ultimately, it was a place of worship where you would just come and surrender your all and be in awe of who this God is. Um, we also saw that there were uh, the other tribes, uh, you know, of those days in the surrounding nations, they also had altars, but their altars would have idols, the man-made idols. However, the idols, uh, sorry, the altars that was built by Abraham uh, had no idols. It was just a plain altar on which the sacrifice would be burnt, right? Um, and then we came fast forward to Romans chapter 12 and where we see the Paul says, therefore I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, right? Um, so this is one thing that God is expecting us to build altars, but he's not just expecting us to build altars. He's also expecting us to lay our life on that altar, to live our life as a living sacrifice, right? Um, so that's what, what we concluded uh, 
you know, in in page eight from your notes. And um, so that was that was the first section of of chapter one. Okay, today we uh, will continue and to see how worship ministry was organized in the Old Testament. Okay, we are still in page number eight, one point two, worship in the Bible, how it was organized in the Old Testament. Okay, so just to give us a basic uh, understanding of what exactly happened. Um, again, we see the Abraham, you know, initiating this uh, altars. And then when we come to the book of Exodus, we see that God gives Moses uh, a blueprint for the tabernacle, which is known as the tabernacle of Moses, right? And that was the place of worship for the Israelites through the wilderness. And it was also supposed to be uh, their place of worship even after they reached their promised land. But then you read that in the book of Joshua and Judges, especially, that they forget about the tabernacle and they go back to, uh, to the altars, uh, to the worship method of uh, building altars. Uh, you read that through the book of Judges, um, is that they go back, um, kind of say something that they, they forgot about the presence of God. They forgot about the place of their place of worship, which God gave Moses, which they were supposed to continue. Um, so, um, so let's just go to the notes and, uh, you know, and see what it says. Would you like me to share the screen uh, of our notes? Yeah, I'll, I'll actually go ahead and do that. So that we can all follow. Okay. Um, so yeah, we see that the Old Testament does not give us an exact blueprint of the worship of ancient Israel. However, uh, contains some important principles that can help us in structuring our worship. Okay, those word principles is very important for us to understand. So it's not giving exact methods and steps and whatnot. But we can certainly take away certain principles that they followed. So uh, after leaving Egypt, God gave the people of Israel the law and the commandment that a tabernacle be constructed. The tribe of Levi were set aside to serve as priests for God and his people. Uh, the Old Testament book of Exodus and Leviticus provide specific instruction about the manner in which worship and sacrifice was to occur. Right. So all of this was given. I mean, we read the book of Exodus and Leviticus. There are certain instructions that God gives Moses and the tribe of uh, the Levitical priesthood to follow. Right. OK, you have you ought to do this sacrifice and, uh, you know, follow these certain procedures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. Um, and then uh, while the people of Israel were clearly commanded to worship God, Deuteronomy 6.13 says you shall fear only the lord your god and you shall worship him and swear by his name exodus 33 10 says when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent all the people would arise and worship each at the entrance of his tent so this was primarily uh, how the worship was kind of organized in the tabernacle of Moses. This whole passage is talking about that. But we will learn in detail about the tabernacle of Moses in, an, in the sections to come. Okay. So this is just a gist of uh, you know, what went on. But let's just um, uh, come down and we'll see how worship was organized uh, in the in the temp in David's temple, or also known as the Tabernacle of um, David, and and in the temple that Solomon built. Okay, these are just a few scriptures that I've mentioned. Uh, once again, we will learn uh, in detail about the Tabernacle of David in another section after the Tabernacle of Moses. Okay, so I hope you are all with me so far. Um, so here we go. Worship in the temple. 
So after its construction by Solomon in 1000 BC, the temple in Jerusalem became the prominent focus of Jewish worship. Okay, it was it that, you know, that was it. That was the place where every Jew would go to worship. That was like the ultimate place of worship, the temple that Solomon built. It appears that the emphasis of worship in the temple was primarily on sacrificial offerings and praise to God through music. Okay, sacrificial offerings and praise to God through music. Where? In the temple that Solomon built. The music was comprised of numerous various instruments that even David created, invented, as well as well-trained vocal choirs. Okay, somewhat similar to the melodious four-part harmony that we have in today's day and age. Okay, so, so two things that was prominent in, in the temple that Solomon built was sacrificial offerings and music praising God through music, okay? Now, those two was obviously, now, sacrificial of offerings was carried forward uh, by uh, by what they, I'm sure they would, uh, you know, understood that this is what happened in the tabernacle of Moses. And so he brings that along and that, that happened through his tabernacle. And then it was David who introduced music, uh, uh, you know, as another aspect of worship in his tabernacle. Okay, so we're going to read a few scriptures um, of, uh, you know, that's mentioned about the tabernacle of David uh, and the temple. Okay, can, uh, can some of us take turns to read uh, these uh, sections that's mentioned in your notes, please? One of us read the first two points. Anybody, just go for it. All right, Prince, uh, do you mind reading the first two points, please? Yeah. So, sir. This one, uh, uh, Second Samuel 6, 5. Yes. As the Ark of the Covenant was being brought to Jerusalem, David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with all kinds of instrument made of fowl and with, with lyres, yeah. lyres, harps, and tambourines, trombones, castanets, cast and and cymbals. cymbals. Okay. And first, first Chronicles 16, 4 to 6. He appointed some of the Levites and uh, as a minister before the Ark of the Lord, even to, uh, even to celebrate and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. As the chief and second of him, uh, Zechariah, then Jael, Samaritan jail, Matitaya, Matitaya, Eliva, Benaniah, Obey Dom, and Jail with music, musical instrument harp, players. Also, Asa played loud sounding cymbals and Benia and Jahajel, the, the priest, bail trumpet continuously before the Ark of the Covenant of God. Okay. Thank you so much, Prince. I uh, appreciate it. Okay, so from just these two points, uh, we see that David was very passionate about worship. That's one thing. And he was so passionate about that, so he introduced uh, variety of instruments uh, around you know so and just from the very first verse uh, in second samuel 6 5 uh, as he was bringing the ark of the covenant back to jerusalem to uh, you know to israel um he introduced these you know instruments made up of wood and lyres and harps you know and tambourines and, and cymbals uh and whatnot can we can only imagine what that procession looked like 
right? Uh, just imagine in your main road, right in front of your house, uh, you know, the king of your nation, the king, okay, of the nation is leading the way. He is excited. He is happy. He is worshiping. He is dancing before the presence of God. That's what the Ark of the Covenant symbolizes, isn't it? Uh, with all these instruments played by uh, other people, you know, just making the noise, worshiping him, praising. Uh, it it should have been it would have been quite a scene, isn't it? Um, and then we see that in First Chronicles chapter sixteen, it was four and six. Uh, after the ark, ark is brought back to Jerusalem, he sets up the tabernacle and then he appoints some of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord. Okay, Even to celebrate and to thank and praise the God of Israel. And there were a few people he sets like Asaph, Zechariah, and then Met, uh, Metatiah, uh, and these names are very hard to pronounce. Uh, Obed, Edom, etc., uh, etc. Et okay, so and notice this line: um, the priests blew trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God. They blew trumpets continually. Uh, now I don't know how it. Uh, went about that, how they went about that, but they must have had a lot of energy and it, sh it must have been a loud, loud place to be around, right? With all these instruments being clashing and uh, so beautifully organized and with the trumpets, you know, being blown continually. I mean, wow. wow. It, it, it would have been an awesome sight. Okay, let's go on. So we see that in First Chronicles chapter 25, uh, verse 1, it says, Moreover, David and the commanders of the army set apart for the service uh, some of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and Jerithin, who were to prophesy with lyres, harps, and cymbals. Now, uh, we are going to go deep uh, into this uh, verse first chronicles chapter 25 verse 1 in another section okay we're going to just break that verse down and uh, understand more about how david set his tabernacle how he organized worship in his tabernacle okay but look look at this so he sets a few people uh, what were they supposed to do with their instruments it says they were to prophesy with with their instruments with lyres and harps and cymbals um and, and so now we know that we can prophesy with uh, instruments as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be verbal, isn't it? It's wonderful. Okay. Uh, can somebody else read uh, this section, please? Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 12 and 14. Second Chronicles. Yeah, 14. Speaks of all the Levitical singers, Esau, Haman, uh, Jerusalem and their sons and kinsmen, clothed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyres, standing east of the altar, and with them 120 priests blowing trumpets in unison when the trumpeters and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and to glorify the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice, accompanied by trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and when they praise the Lord saying he indeed is good for his loving kindness is everlasting than the house the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not stand in to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God thank you Dave uh... Now, I, I want us all to share what stood out from that verse to you in the chat section or feel free to unmute your mic and share. What stands out the most for you in that verse? Or what are some of the key words that stand out to you, not just one word? And the cloud of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. Uh, the, the glory that they, they felt uh, so that they couldn't even minister because of the presence of the Lord. Okay. 
thank you, Dave. The cloud, the glory of the Lord. Okay, that fills the house. Okay. Uh, what else? House of the Lord. Sorry, Kanan. House of the Lord. House, house. House of the Lord. Okay, so fill the house of God. Yes, so it was his house. Okay, not someone else's, anybody else's. Okay, thank you. What else? Okay. Let me read it again. Okay, yeah. and uh, you it, see it, what stands out. Uh, hmm? His loving ahead, kindness please. is everlasting. His loving kindness, loving kindness is, everlasting. is everlasting. Okay, nice. That's what they were singing, isn't it? For he, he indeed is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Thank you, Prince. What else, guys? Kiran, Manu, Aaron. Every everyone is praising God that His loving kindness is forever. Okay. So what 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 else stands out? Uh, what other key words kind of uh, stands out to you as you read? I tell you what. Glorify uh, I'm, I'm, the Lord. Uh, sorry. Glorify the Lord. Okay, glorify the Lord. Okay, now I'm going to read this scripture uh, one more time, okay? And uh, let's see if there are certain words that kind of stand out to you, okay? So Second Chronicles 5, 12 to 14. All the Levitical singers, Asaph, Heman, Jerathan, and their sons and kinsmen, kinsmen just means relatives, right? Uh, clothed in fine linen, with symbols, harps, and lyres standing east of the altar. Okay, so notice that word altar. Um, it was also in the temple. With them, 120 priests blowing trumpets in unison. When the trumpeters and singers uh, were to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and to glorify the Lord, when they lifted up their accompanied, they, when they lifted up their voice, accompanied by trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, when they praised the Lord, saying, "He indeed is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting," then the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with the cloud so that the priests could not stand and minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. I can Amen. find the uh, oneness, unisness. They, they all, the one heart, they raise the voice and play the instrument. Okay, so Thomas is unity, unison. Okay, there was oneness, togetherness. They were all united. That means everybody knew that the focus was just on one person their audience was just one that was uh, and their audience was the alpha and the omega jesus okay it was filled with glory okay what else what else come on Anybody else? Aaron, you want to share? Neelam? Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing, everybody. Um, you know, for me, yeah, as, as Thomas was also sharing, you know, that the unity kind of stand, stands out. Okay, but there's a, a, there are a couple of things that we need to know and understand, okay? Um, it says 120 priests, okay, with 120 priests blowing trumpets. Now, um, 
so I studied a little bit about music and orchestration, right? Uh, so you you know you've seen this big orchestra where you have violins in the front and you have the you know the percussion instruments at the back. Um, you, we've seen that, right? In one side there'll be flutes and all these wood instruments, and and the other section is the brass section, right? That's where you'll find the trumpets and all these trombones. Where the you know have have you seen that? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure, the brass section, right? Uh, way at the back. The brass section is the loudest section in all of the orchestra. Now, there, there will be 60 violinists, you know, the string section. There will be so many in the percussion section. But there will only be like four trumpet players. Okay, and then you'll have this conductor in front of the orchestra who's conducting, right? And most of the time, he'll always, you know, it's like, hey, control your volume. You know, he'll be telling that to the brass section. Because just three or four trumpets can easily overpower the entire orchestra. So the big band, the big orchestra is made up of at least 120 musicians. Okay, how many? 120 musicians. That means those trumpeters, this was four people, can easily overpower uh, over a hundred musicians. And that's how loud they are. And here it says there are a hundred and twenty priests blowing a hundred and twenty trumpets. Wow. And hundred and twenty trumpets, they're all blowing together in unison. That's just another epic scene right there, you know. And, and their passion to worship God was just uh, unparalleled, unrivaled. Uh, their zeal to worship him was just unrivaled. Uh, it seems like that, right? Uh, they all with one voice to praise and glorify God. And their song is, is not, you know, it doesn't seem like a like one, you know, Three verse chorus and an amazing bridge that we have is very simple. They praised, saying, He indeed is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. That was enough. Their one heart, their one voice, the, you know, to come together to just lift up praise, and God shows up. And when he does, the priests, the people are not able to stand in that presence because his cloud, his glory was tangible, right? Tangible means what? You can touch it. You can feel it. The weight, when we say Shekinah glory, it simply means the weight of his glory. They could experience and feel that weightness of his glory and that they could not stand. And his glory filled his house. Amen. Uh, so important, isn't it, for us to know when we learn about worship ministry, we always have to remember who are we worshiping and who is this ministry about? Because it's very easy for us to make this ministry about ourselves and, and, we, and think that we are the recipients of worship when we are not. The worship is towards him. The ministry that we do is for him. And when that is clear, he shows up in a way that we can never imagine. Amen. All right, let's go on. Are you guys with me? Everybody? Yes, yes but that's so powerful. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Pastor. Let's go on. Uh, can I request uh, somebody else to read this section, please? Second Chronicles 29, 25 to 30, please. I read it, sir. Sure. Second Chronicles 29, verse 25 to 30. It speaks of the worship to God instigated by his. Uh, he then stationed the Levites in the house of the Lord with symbols, with harps, and with lyres, according to the command of David and of God and King Seir and of Nathan the, proper, the prophet. For the command was. Uh, from the Lord through his prophet, the Levites stood with the musical instruments of David and the priests 
with the tempted the hezekiah gave the order to offer the burnt offering on the altar when the burnt offering began the song the song of the lord also begin with the tempted accompanied by the instruments of david king of israel while the whole assembly worship and the singers also sang and the trumpets sounded all his continued until the burnt offering was finished now at the completion of the burnt offering the king and all who were present with the with him bowed down and worship moreover king hezekiah and the officials ordered the levites to sing praise to the lord with the words of david and ashab the seer so they sang praise praises with joy and bowed down and worshiped thank you mano uh, thank you so much uh, all right guys come on speak to me uh, what stands out to you what words kind of stick out to you from that scripture Come on, come on, come on. Very quiet. Okay. So there. Bow down and worship. Okay, bow down and worship. Okay. I are you all reading that verse again? <laughs> Okay, praise God with musical instruments. Okay, praise with joy. All right. What else, Kanan? What else kind of stands out to you? Offering and worship. Okay. All king worship him. All right. Thank you. The Lord through the prophets. the law through the, his prophets right okay hey right, so um the hezekiah was another king that came after david okay so uh and although the kings changed they kind of followed the pattern and the instructions that was set by david okay so here's what it says right he then who hezekiah he stationed the levites in the once again house of the lord with cymbals with harps and lyres okay according to the command of david that means he has said this is how it's supposed to be everybody who comes after me as king follow these commands follow these instructions this is what you ought to do you set levites in their station they they have to have their instruments okay according to the command of david and of gad the king's seer and of Nathan the prophet for the command was from the lord through his prophets next the levites stood with musical instruments of david that mean that says david also created musical instruments and the priests with trumpets now everybody is ready then hezekiah gave the order okay you see this until everybody were in their position until everybody were ready and prepared to do their roles and responsibility the king did not give the order to start the service okay you see that when when everybody was ready when everybody was in position when everything is set then hezekiah gave the order saying to offer the burnt offering on the altar now when the off burnt offering began the song to the lord also began with the trumpets accompanied by the instruments of david king of israel while the whole assembly worshiped the singers also sang and the trumpets sounded all this continued until the burnt offering was finished now, this is so important all this continued what all continued the singing the shouting the playing of the trumpets the playing of the instruments everything continued 
until the burnt offering was finished. Now, I wish this scripture said for how long it went on, like the offering was, you know, burning. But we don't know. It must have gone on for hours. Right? Sometimes we get tired of 30 minutes and 45 minutes of worship and singing and shouting. But I really don't know. It must have gone for long hours, isn't it? All of them continued singing, dancing, praising, worshiping the King of Kings until the burnt offering was finished. What happened after that? Now at the completion of burnt offerings, the king and all who were present with him bowed down in worship. The worship service didn't stop after the offerings were done bur burning. After the offerings were burnt completely, the king and all all who were present, that means the priests, the, the palace officials, the king's officials, the ministers, everybody with the king bowed down and worshipped. Bowed down in worship. Moreover, King Hezekiah and the officials ordered the Levites to sing praises to the Lord and with words of David and Asaph the seer. So they sang with praises with joy and bowed down and worshipped. I mean, it must have been such an event, such a grand procession when it came to worshipping the Lord. It's like they just didn't want to stop worshipping him. Okay, okay, so, you know, the burnt offering was on the altar. We worshipped. It's, it's finished burning. We will still worship. And after that, after we bowed down and worshipped, we will still continue to worship. <laughs> uh, so it's like they didn't want to go back home. They wanted to be around the presence. It was isn't that wonderful? Yeah, and one of the and one of the key things here we read, at least that stands out to me, is um, it. The king was also a worshiper. He led the way. Now, m later on, God's you know God's called us to be le leaders in our own ministries or wherever you are. God places you for whatever ministry He calls you to do. Um, it's so important for us leaders, for you as a leader, to be a worshiper. And because King Hezekiah led, you know, I said, "Come on, let's go do this." Everybody followed his command. And because King bowed down in worship, everybody else followed him in worship. Amen. So as leaders, it's very important, uh, you know, to guard our hearts and to be a worshiper. Okay. Are you guys uh, with me, everybody? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Awesome. Uh, let's just continue now. Uh, worship in the second temple. Okay, now, uh, so what happens, as we know, that uh, in the first temple gets destroyed, uh, you know, by Nebuchadnezzar, by the Babylon, the king of the Babylons. Okay, so let's read here. Following the destruction of the temple that was built by Solomon, by Nebuchadnezzar, and the Babylonian exile happens, right? After the destruction, the Babylonians invade uh, Jerusalem, and they take people... As, uh, as slaves, as prisoners, and they go back, okay? And that, uh, and that exile lasts for 70 years, okay? So that's the context here, okay? So the people of Israel returned to Jerusalem in 539 BC around that year. The time of the second temple is divided into different periods. That is the Persian period, the Hellenistic period, and the Roman period. Okay, so there are three empires that ruled uh, during this period, and this lasted approximately for 500 odd years. Okay, all these three uh, empires, these reigns put together. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm sure you would also read about this in Nehemiah talking about this when he's when he serves as a cupbearer. Uh, and you know, the king Xerxes sends them back. He's like, okay, you have my permission to go back and build that walls, build the temple, right? So that's the context of what is happening here. So uh, King Cyrus of Persia, he issues uh, the permission for them to go back and build the second temple. So 
And then we see before the destruction of the first temple, Jeremiah had famously prophesied about this. For so said God, for at the completion of 70 years of Babylon, I will remember you and I will fulfill my good word to you to restore you to this place. Um, so, and indeed, uh, this is what happened. A little more than 50 years after the destruction of the first temple, the Babylonians who had destroyed the first temple were vanquished by the rising Persian Empire. So after 50 years, uh, 50 years into the exile, uh, the Persians were now defeating the Babylonians slowly. Uh, and the Persian king Cyrus the Great soon authorized the Jews to rebuild the temple. Isn't that amazing? A king who doesn't know this God uh, authorizes them to go and build the temple. But construction ground to a halt due to interference by the Samaritans. Every time Jews would go and build, uh, the Samaritans would come and destroy the temple, destroy what they're building. You know, this is what Nehemiah also writes, right? So around 353 BCE, uh, exactly 70 years after the destruction of the first temple, the Jews, the Jews began building again. Uh, first independently, but King Darius soon ratified their effort. He pushed, he encouraged them to build it uh, pretty fast. So, and the second temple era, it spanned approximately 420 years, ending with the Romans' destruction of the Holy Temple in 70 CE. So the Romans again destroyed the second temple around 70 CE, which is now, which was known as AD, right, after death. Okay, but here's the thing. Why, why is it so important for us to understand the historical background, the context? Um, is It's very simple. There was a temple that Solomon built. It was destroyed. Then the Israelites are gone as prisoners for 70 years in exile. They serve different uh, kings. But there's something unique happens, which we will learn in sections to come, is something called the house church and this uh, the system of the synagogues was birthed and was developed during this period because the Jews did not have a place of worship, right? They did not, I'm not, I don't know if they were allowed to build altars like they were used to. They did not have a temple. They did not have a tabernacle that they carried around in the wilderness. So how else? They had to continue to worship. They had to continue to meet for fellowship, isn't it? And the system, most historians and scholars say the system of the house, church, and synagogues was initiated here and it developed uh, and progress as, as the years progressed. Okay. So the Old Testament books of Ezra and Nehemiah tell of the work in repairing the damage that was done. Um, of their worship at that time. Okay. Uh, can I request uh, somebody to read this passage, please? Ezra chapter 2, this whole section, please. Anyone, go for it. I think I'll read so. Ezra 2.41 records the return of 128 Levitic Levitical singers, the sons of Aspa. Ezra 3.10.11 states, Now when the builders had laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in the day of prayer with trumpets and the Levites, the sons of Aspa, with cymbals to praise the Lord according to the directions of the king David of Israel. They sang, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, saying, He is good, for His loving kindness is upon Israel forever. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house was the Lord of the Lord was laid. Amen. Thank you, Siddharth. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? There, you know, after the exile, people come and but they have not forgotten what used to happen in the temple. And the, com and the command and the instructions which was originally given by David. Years later, generations later, the same pattern of worship seems to have followed here, right? Uh, they returned with 128 Levitical singers. Uh, and Ezra 3, 10, 11 states that 
when the when when they laid the foundations uh, for the temple of the lord the priests stood in their apparel what was their apparel apparel means the clothes right in in the previous scriptures we saw they wore fine linen okay so that means the priest stood again with fine linen with trumpets again and the levites um, the sons of um, asaph uh, with symbols to praise the lord Ag according to the directions of king david they sang praising giving thanks to the lord saying the same song that they had sung before for he is good for his loving kindness is upon israel forever all the people shouted with a great joy great shout when they praised the lord because the foundation of the house of the lord was laid man uh thank you uh can i request somebody else to read the next section please nehemiah chapter 12 verse 27 to 43 Now just, at the dedication uh, of the wall of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. they sought out the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate and dedication of the gladness, both now with a thanksgiving and singing with the cymbals and stringed instruments and harps. And the sons of the singers gathered together from the countryside around Jerusalem, from the villages of Net uh, Netophathites, from the house of Gilgal, and from the fields of Geba, and uh, Asmaveth, for the singers had built themselves villages all around Jerusalem. Then the priests and the Levites purified themselves and purified the purified the people, the gates and the wall. So I brought the leaders of Judah up to the wall and appointed two large thanksgiving choirs. Mm -hmm. One went to the right and on the wall towards the Refuse, Refuse gate. After he went uh, Saya, the half of the leaders of Judah and Azariah, Ezra, Meshulam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, Jeremiah, and some of the priests, sons of trumpets, Zechariah, the sons of Jonathan, the sons of Shemai, the sons of Matanai, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zakur, the son of Asaph, and his brother, brethren, Shemai, Azariah, Milalai, Gilalai, Mai, Nathan, Nathanel, Judah and Hanani and the musical instruments, David, the men of God, and Ezra, the scribe, went before them by the fountain gate in front of them. They went up to the stairs of the city of David on the stairway of the wall beyond the house of David, as far as the water gate eastward. The other Thanksgiving choir went up opposite way and I was behind them with the half of the people on the wall going past on the tower of the ovens, as far as the broad wall, and above the gate Ephraim, above the old gate, above the fish gate, and the tower of Hananel, and the tower of the hundred, and as far as the sheep gate, and they stopped by the gate of the prison. So two thanksgiving choirs stood in the house of God. Likewise, I stand off of the rulers with me, and the priest Eliakim, Masi, uh, Masiah, Min, Minajim, Mikai, Yellow Nai, Zachariah, and Hananel, with the trumpets also Messiah, Shemai, Elisia, Uzi, Jonathan, Minkeza, Elam, and Ezar, the singers sang loudly with the Zechariah, the, the director. Also, that the day they offered great sacrifice and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy, and the women and the children also rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. Thank you so much, Thomas. I appreciate it. Um, so, I mean, we would generally not go to this passage and, uh, you know, we will not tell, okay, my favorite passage is uh, Nehemiah chapter 12 in this section, isn't it? Uh, because we will tend to overlook it because of the names and the details that's mentioned. But in the context of what we've been learning, uh, when you see, you know, that, coming togetherness. Um, he's mentioned so many different names in this scripture that just goes to say that there were so many different people, different people coming together in unity just for one reason. That is to praising and worshiping him. And 
and you know they organized they just didn't say okay you go do whatever you want okay or go stand wherever you want you know do whatever you know it was organized it was planned it says okay you this group will go this side and this choir will go that side you will go stand over there we will go to this gate uh, very clear instructions were given right and again when everything was ready when everybody were in place then the instruction was given to worship to offer sacrifices to sing praise uh, and you know it says the last one says the sound of rejoicing in jerusalem could be heard far away okay the sound of rejoicing in jerusalem could be heard far far away um and i found this section these scriptures so beautiful uh you know um, let me just stop by sharing here okay this is one quick uh, question here manu is asking why destruction of the temple happened so uh, you know as jeremiah prophesied, prophesied right manu what happened is that again people of israel did commit uh, evil in the eyes of the lord and uh, and and the other army the nebuchadnezzar the babylonian army invaded israel and they destroyed the temple as well so that's why the destruction of the temple happened so it, they destroyed the temple because the people of israel uh, and judah they did evil in the eyes of the lord and actually when you read the scriptures the enemy that attacked israel the babylonians also said is like hey you know uh, we attacked because you lived a sinful life uh, uh, you know you were evil doers uh, and yeah that's that, that's what led to the exile okay um so uh, uh is everybody okay i know we've just gone a few minutes over our break time uh but did, what did, did, were you all able to follow uh everything from the section until now yes sir yes sir okay let me stop the recording then um